in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit. Dear parishioners, it is now the fifth Sunday of Easter, and very soon we will be celebrating the great feast of Pentecost, the coming of the Holy Spirit. As we prepare to enter into the great mystery of Easter, the mystery of our Lord's death and resurrection, let us all take just a moment in silence to acknowledge our need for God's mercy, pardon, and forgiveness. Lord Jesus, you have shown us the way to the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you have given us the consolation of the truth. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the good shepherd leading us into everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. The Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to life everlasting. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, constantly accomplish the Paschal mystery within us, that those you were pleased to make new in holy baptism may, under your protective care, bear much fruit and come to the joys of life eternal. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. As the number of disciples continued to grow, the Hellenists complained against the Hebrews because their widows were being neglected in the daily distribution. So the twelve called together the community of the disciples and said, It is not right for us to neglect the word of God to serve at table. Brothers, select from among you seven reputable men, filled with the spirit and wisdom, whom we shall appoint to this task, whereas we shall devote ourselves to prayer and to the ministry of the word. The proposal was acceptable to the whole community, so they chose Stephen, a man filled with faith and the Holy Spirit, also Philip, Prochorus, Nicanor, Timon, Parmenas, and Nicholas of Antioch, a convert to Judaism. They presented these men to the apostles who prayed and laid hands on them. The word of God continued to spread, and the number of the disciples in Jerusalem increased greatly. Even a large group of priests were becoming obedient to the faith. The word of the Lord. The responsorial psalm is, Lord, let your mercy be on us as we place our trust in you. 
Exult, you just, in the Lord. Praise from the upright is fitting. Give thanks to the Lord on the harp. With the ten-string lyre, chant his praises. Lord, let your mercy be on us as we place our trust in you. Upright is the word of the Lord, and all his works are trustworthy. He loves justice and right. Of the kindness of the Lord, the earth is full. Lord, let your mercy be on us as we place our trust in you. See the eyes of the Lord are upon those who fear him, upon those who hope for his kindness, to deliver them from death and preserve them in spite of famine. Lord, let your mercy be on us as we place our trust in you. A reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Beloved, come to him, a living stone, rejected by human beings, but chosen and precious in the sight of God. And, like living stones, let yourselves be built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For it says in scripture, Behold, I am laying a stone in Zion, a cornerstone chosen and precious, and whoever believes in it shall not be put to shame. Therefore, its value is for you who have faith, but for those without faith, the stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone a stone that will make people stumble, and a rock that will make them fall. They stumble by disobeying the word, as is their destiny. You are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people of his own, so that you may announce the praises of him who called you out of the darkness into his wonderful light. The word of the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. I am the way, the truth, and the life, says the Lord. No one comes to the Father except through me. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, Do not let your hearts be troubled. You have faith in God, have faith also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If there were not, would I have told you that I am going to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back again and take you to myself, so that where I am, you also may be. Where I am going, you know the way. Thomas said to Jesus, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, then you will also know my Father. From now on, you do know him, and you have seen him. Philip said to Jesus, Lord, show us the Father, and that will be enough for us. Jesus said to Philip, Have I been with you so very long, and you still do not know me, Philip? Whoever has seen me, has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words that I speak to you, I do not speak on my own. Rather, the Father who dwells in me is doing his works. 
believe me that I am in the Father and the Father is in me, or else believe because of the works themselves. Amen, amen, I say to you, whoever believes in me will do the works that I do and will do greater works than these because I am going to the Father. The Gospel of the Lord. Dear friends in Christ, uh, today is Mother's Day and rather sad to see that the church is empty on this day when it is so beautiful to celebrate motherhood. It's also very difficult to comprehend that this is already the fifth Sunday of Easter, that Pentecost is very close, and yet we have not been together to worship since the middle of Lent. What a very strange period this has been for all of us. Uh, we have been celebrating the most important period in our life as Catholic Christians, and we've been celebrating it away from our parish church, scattered about in the parish, sheltered at home. This, of course, is not our own doing. It's not something we wanted. It's a situation that is far beyond our control. But it certainly gives us reason to stop and reflect about what is happening to us in our lives these days. I have had many conflicting thoughts and feelings during these past several weeks. There have been days when I've enjoyed the silence and the solitude that has been forced upon me. But there have also been days when I've been filled with anxiety at being confined in one place. And so I do find special comfort in the words that Jesus speaks to us in today's gospel. Do not let your hearts be troubled. You have faith in God, have faith in me. For in my Father's house, there are many dwelling places. You see, I need someone to tell me over and over again, do not let your heart be troubled. I need to hear these words of assurance from someone who has passed through the dark valley of death. I need someone to assure me that a place has been prepared for me I need someone I can trust and rely upon. That is why I need the risen Lord Jesus Christ to say these words to me over and over again. Do not let your heart be troubled. There is so much to be troubled about these days, but when we are troubled, nothing is accomplished. When we are troubled, nothing is resolved. When we are troubled, we don't feel any the better for it. That is why we need to place our trust and hope in someone who is more powerful to do what we cannot do. That is why we need to trust and rely and the one who has passed through the valley of death. That is why we need to trust in Christ, who is our rock, our savior, our good shepherd. Now I understand how foolish it is to simply say to another person in distress, don't worry, everything will be all right. Those words are always very easy to say, but they only make sense when we ourselves rely and trust on the source of our strength and our life, 
our Savior, Jesus Christ. For when we trust, then we can speak those words of encouragement to other people deep from the experience of our own life. These have been difficult days for many people, and they're not going to get better overnight. But the distress we are experiencing today need not and should not define our lives. It will pass, and life will return once more. But our lives will only be renewed if we place our trust and hope in one greater than ourselves, in the one who has passed through the valley of death, in the one who is the way, the truth, and the life, in the one who shows us the Father. Do not let your hearts be troubled this week. Have faith in God and faith in Christ, and trust that in God's way, in God's time, God's plan will be revealed and all will be well. May God watch over and bless you on this beautiful Mother's Day. May he keep you always in his loving embrace. Together, we profess our faith as we say, I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men in our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. As people called by God, a chosen race, a royal priesthood, let us present our needs to him with confidence. For all of us baptized into Christ's church and the royal priesthood, may the Lord continue to increase our faith for the sake of his kingdom. Let us pray to the Lord. For all in positions of authority, may God's grace enable them to lead with integrity protecting life from conception through natural death. Let us pray to the Lord. For any who are struggling to believe and those whose faith is weak, may Christ speak to their troubled hearts and give them hope. Let us pray to the Lord. For all who have been welcomed into the church this Easter season, may the Holy Spirit continue to form them as living stones. Let us pray to the Lord. For those who have died, may he who has prepared a place for them welcome them to the splendor of their heavenly home. Let us pray to the Lord. Gracious God, you know our needs before we ask. 
Please hear and answer our prayers this day according to your will. We ask in Jesus' name. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. For through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth, work of human hands, it will become our bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine, work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Brothers and sisters in Christ, pray that my sacrifice and yours will become acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. O God, who by the wonderful exchange effected in this sacrifice have made us partakers of the one supreme Godhead, grant, we pray, that as we have come to know your truth, we may make it ours in a worthy way of life through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. He never ceases to offer himself for us, but defends us and ever pleads our cause before you. He is the sacrificial victim who dies no more, the lamb once slain who lives forever. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the hymn of your unending glory as they acclaim, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, Leonard, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant our peace and unity according to your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other a sign of Christ's peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. <clears throat> May the receiving of your holy body and blood, Lord Jesus Christ, not bring me to judgment and condemnation, but through your loving mercy, before me protection in mind and body and a healing remedy. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, 
say but the word and my soul will be healed. May the body of Christ keep me safe for eternal life. May the blood of Christ keep me safe for eternal life. Let us pray. Graciously be present to your people, we pray, O Lord, and lead those you have imbued with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to newness of life through Christ our Lord. Dear friends, on this Mother's Day, we traditionally give a special blessing to all the mothers of the parish. First of all, let me congratulate and extend my thanks to all the mothers of our parish. And of course, today at Mass, I have remembered all of the members, mothers of our parish, both living and deceased. And so now I call upon God's blessing upon the mothers of the parish. Loving God, as a mother gives life and nourishment to her children, so you watch over your church. Bless the women of our parish, that they may be strengthened as Christian mothers. Let the example of their faith and love shine forth and grant that we, their sons and daughters, may honor them always with a spirit of profound respect through Christ our Lord. May the blessing of Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit descend upon and remain with you forever. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. <laughs>